that's bad for your company. Bad company, that's bad for your company. Bad cow disease, now you in a ton of beef. beef. Tuck underneath my new blue dunker freeze. Flintstone bust. Americana, fruity pebble, bezel, Wilma, Betty, Fred, and Barney. Bad, bad. I'm out of town. I think she modeled at McCarmy. Risk game, lucky charmy. Told my jeweler, let her call me. I'ma come clean. I got, I got me. Have a knees, okay. Dating cause I'm up and up the fees. Whole team got these on their tees all day. I got so much beef, I could barely sleep. Paranoia got me losing on my Z's all day. Good love, mama praying on the knees all day. If you still frighten when I... EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the architectural wonder that is the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in downtown Atlanta. We thought the old place was loud. Somehow this place got even louder a short time ago as the Falcons were introduced to this sellout crowd. We're set to go as the Falcons get ready to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh Lambeau now ready to put this one in the air. And in front of a raucous crowd, this one is underway. That's fielded in the end zone. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Take a shot right away. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Oh, and now some space to operate. A big play there on the first play of the game. 49 yards. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. The former Indiana Hoosier here, Tevin Coleman. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. Pretty effective run there, and now they can start to smell that end zone. Pound the rock. Make sure you use your old line to set the tone of dominance and physicality and pound the rock. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. down with Ryan and his throw is incomplete anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field makes it very hard to slot one in look like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando Florida an absolute mess second and ten now Ryan is running back complete. And he is into the end zone for a Falcon touchdown. Tevin Coleman from 13 yards out. And the Falcons take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. Here's Bryant to kick it away.
down. This is Leonard Fournette. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. Ah, the good old toss play. And this time they go to the left side, so give a lot of credit to the Robert, offensive line. Robert. Center, guard, tackle, able to seal that side. But the guy that we don't give enough credit to, wide receivers. They have to do a great job of blocking downfield. Otherwise, that play can be spilled in the backfield. In this case, everyone handled their responsibilities, and they picked up really nice yardage. He has elite instincts from his linebacker spot. He's able to diagnose the run and flies in like a missile to stop that one behind the line of scrimmage. Make it third and ten. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Shotgun snap, Kessler. A throw left side, complete to his receiver, Westbrook. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 11 yards there for Jacksonville and a first down as well. Kessler. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Deion Jones. Coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you hope is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. On the ground, this is T.J. Yeldon. And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. I wonder if they just kind of outguess themselves a little bit, trying to run it on third down. Probably should have gone to the air to try and pick it up. Instead, the punting unit will have to run on the field. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. Fourth down conversion plays, you usually think one, two, three yards, maybe 10. Not there. What a huge pickup as the sticks make a... And it's intercepted at the goal line. Good positioning, and it's picked off. This interception will go on the record of the quarterback, but as a receiver, you've got to understand where you are in the field. Middle portion, you know it's going to come in hot. Square your body to the quarterback and be ready to make the catch. The Atlanta Falcons, Charles, with that loss last week against New Orleans, they're now knocked out of the division race. It would have been a, a long, tough road regardless, but with all the injuries they've had on defense, and we've discussed this, it was going to be a tough stretch for them anyway. It certainly was, and they didn't help their cause in the game because despite those injuries, despite the fact key players weren't on the field, they still moved the ball pretty darn well. They ended up losing three fumbles inside the Saints 20, four turnovers overall, that's what costs you a chance to win a ball game because yeah. they played them pretty tough. Just hurt themselves when they had an opportunity to get the ball in the end zone. And Matt Ryan, their leading rusher with only 16 yards. The team had 26 rushing yards combined. Say that one more time. Who was the leading rusher? Matt Ryan. That tells you all you need to know about that game. Flush to his right. Now he's going to let it go deep. Run. He's got a man complete. A gain of 32 that time. Someone sharp in this game. I mean, a touchdown pass in the first drive. He comes right back, and he's flinging it around really well here. Really nice throw there to pick up the first down. You kind of just feel a laser focus and confidence about him, and I think we saw that this week, didn't we? Talking to him and the coaches, they felt good about his performance coming up. Yeah, I was really impressed with that last practice we saw. When they went through two-minute drill, when they went through all the different situations, ball hardly hit the ground, and I thought... Yeah, he might be locked in for this one. That goes for a gain of 31. Eleven. 
from the red zone now. Here's Ryan on first down. It's a new this time for a Falcon touch for this opening quarter. And the Falcons will add on to their lead. Bryant's extra point up and good. And that'll make the score 14 to zip. Now here's Bryant to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Charles, for Jacksonville, how do you break down what has happened to them this season? I mean, 3-8 and now, seven straight losses, and they can pretty much forget about the playoffs. Truthfully, I'm absolutely shocked. I did not see this coming from this team. I thought that they built themselves to such a stage last year that it was a jump off to this season. And we keep coming back to early in the year when they jumped on New England. I thought that was a turn the page, eliminate you know, the AFC Championship game loss, and keep moving forward. They have not been the same team since. It actually worked against them. I think they thought they were better than what they were. Or they thought that people would be afraid of them. Whatever it is, you see them playing with a lack of poise. And now they've jettisoned their offensive coordinator. He became the scapegoat for their troubles. It's much bigger than that. Here we go, here we go. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. little surprise here on third and one. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he will have the first down, but he winds up paying for it pretty good. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? They looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you should have a few men in the box there. Fournette, a first down carry. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. Bortles to throw on second down. Over the middle, and it's incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. Throwing his Bortles on third down. Completes it to Lee. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. They do get nine, but it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Falcons say they have it. They do. And they're going to come up empty here on fourth down. So they tried it. Not only did they not get the first, they fumbled it away. Yeah, it's one of those things where it went from bad to worse, but I know that everyone's going to pile in on the call and say, well, what are you doing? Why would you go for it there? I think the teams that are convinced that they feel pretty good about their game plan, what they want to get done that day, go for it. Give it a try. Hey, let's see if your defense can rescue them a little bit. Following the fumble recovery, it's Ryan. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Yannick Ngakwe in there to sack him for a loss of six. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get this one across the 20, but only up to about the 21. He'll get two yards back, but it's going to leave him with a long third and 13. Now Ryan. And they'll get 
get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A pickup of 24 on the third down conversion. A great job pulling that one in from a guy, as we know, who can really blaze. He's got a lot of speed. And that speed can work for him so many different ways. Sometimes he just takes off and goes and just runs past people. Sometimes you get people to back off so far that you can catch everything underneath. But and that's caught inside the 30. He got 29 yards that time. Well, we know he's got the speed there. He needed the speed and the hands. A great catch. And because of that speed, you have to respect it as a defender. So you have to either play off or make sure you're somehow in contact with him. And he's able to do exactly what you said. Use the speed to his advantage and go up and get the pump off. That's a big time play right there. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. A gain of six there on first. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. And he takes it down to the 10-yard line. It's a 10-yard gain there, and it sets him up now first and goal. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Atlanta right after this timeout. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. Throw left side complete. That's Hall. Three yards is the gain that time, second and goal. The goal of a wide receiver screen is get enough blockers in front to create a wall and let him pick his spot to run the football. How about the defense there swarming to it and not allowing that to happen? Did not let him get downfield. Throwing again, Ryan. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Snags it for the pick, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. How about the big boys snagging one? You don't see that every week. No, you don't, but a lot of them are just reliving their old dreams, going back to when they were in youth football and in high school. They didn't always play defensive line. Some of them actually handled the football, and you can see the flashback when he grabbed that one. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. So a jump there defensively. That's a killer. Watch the football. Don't move across the line of scrimmage until the ball moves. Shotgun now for Bortles. Eluding the pressure right. And he's able to get this one up to the eight-yard line this time. Give him a couple on the scramble. It's second down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And able to get it across the 20 before they get to him. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. As long as you go through your proper reads and progressions, the drag route can be one of those old reliable plays because usually it's good for a good chunk of yardage as we just saw there. And those guys like it, right? They can get the ball with a full head of steam. Especially against man coverage because man coverage, you're typically running away from someone and not worried about traffic coming out on the other end. Looking left side and he's got a man. It's Lee. A 14-yard first down pickup for the Jaguars. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. Bortles now on first down. That's into the hands of Westbrook over the middle. And getting this just shy of midfield, they'll spot it at the 49. Same result as last play, 14 yards and another first down. Throwing now is Bortles. Pressure brought in, and the Falcons get there for the sack. The Jaguar is going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Here's Bortles to throw. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. It was Desmond Trufant right there, step for step in coverage. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but 
Only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. And before this fourth and three play, we're going to get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They'll go for it. It's Bortles. He's got the hook up to Lee. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Wow, first and goal, and defensively, all they can do is shake their heads. Not only did they allow the conversion, but a big play as well. Bortles now to throw. His pass caught at the four. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. They get it to him running left. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. And now a timeout defensively by the Falcons as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. They'll try to punch it in with Fournette. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Jacksonville. A great effort there as the first half is winding down. And the Jaguars are back with it a score. Here's Lambeau out to kick this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out, a good one, as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. And all the way down to the 26. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash mark, this is a 43-yard attempt. And Bryant's kick is good. All right, hang on. We'll jump over halftime. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. Out come the Jaguars now as they'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never want to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But this is a do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. That throw good for four. It's second down. You know, despite our here, they're on the road. Right back in this game. I'm along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept them in it by making the plays that they've made. And that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. On first and ten, here's Bortles. Throw left side complete. That's Lee. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Bortles going to throw. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. Bortles now on first down. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by Deion Jones, the linebacker. And his guys are going to take over at the 21-yard line. Well, that incompletion has me thinking. Phillip Rivers last week, I know you that saw this. You crazy. were working. But he only threw one of those that we just saw. One incompletion the entire game. His first 25 passes were complete. It was so much fun because I actually saw a highlight, you know, cut up. 
to put all of them together, one after the other. 25 straight. Mark Brunell had the record previously, 22 straight for Washington in 2006. He goes 28 of 29. And I don't know about you, but that almost sounds more impressive than if he's totally perfect for the day. Yeah. You know what Get I mean? That, it's that, that, one weird, blemish, right? that one blemish really <laughs> sets it apart and lets you know what he did. 96.6 completion percentage. Good luck trying to break that record, people. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, Telvin Smith. And they will score. It's a Jacksonville touchdown. Short throw pick six right there, those linebackers. They love when those short throws come and those eyes get real wide, don't they? How about the anticipation on the play? Reading, reacting, and then the ability to catch the football and take it in the opposite direction. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And the decision to bring it out will cost him about five yards as he'll get this only back to the 20. Now the Falcons offense gets ready to head back onto the field. Ryan and the Falcons now come up first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. 11. Get up! Back to the air, Ryan after the pick six. Wide open receiver complete. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some moxie, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Again on second and ten, it's Ryan. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. He was looking for Mohamed Sanu there. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And it's third down. And the blitz does come. And that's incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Ryan. And they will not be able to hook up there. It's incomplete. The linebacker, Miles Jack, able to knock that one away. So nursing a slim lead, and that is the opposite of protecting that slim lead. All I can think here is that head coach, he knows more about what's going on with his team than we do. He must know something's up. Either he has trouble with his punter, right? He's, he's worried about his defense. There's an explanation in there that we're going to ask for after the game because in this situation, I wouldn't have done that in, in normal circumstances, but maybe he thought my best opportunity is with my offense. Interesting. Back in their own territory. Now we'll see what transpires. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. It's an 8-yard pickup and leads to a new set of downs. 11B, 11B. Throwing on first down is Borders. And the Falcons get there. The Falcons get the sack. Down he goes. So was it a breakdown of protection? Did the running back not pick him up? What does it really matter? Sometimes it's just a great play made by the defense. Big time sack. Now Bortles throwing on second down. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Vic Beasley in there to get him. And this pass rush strong now. That sack's on back-to-back -back plays. Following the sack, third and long for Bortles and the Jags. From the gun, it's Bortles. Escaping the pressure right. On the run, he'll let it go deep. Right sideline. And a shot taken on third down unsuccessful. Fourth down now. 
Boy, well, bounced up after taking a sack and took a shot downfield. I think a lot of us thought maybe he'd run draw in that situation instead. Tried to get all back in one play. Yeah, third and long. Thought he needed a deep pass. Couldn't connect it. Maybe he was hoping for a penalty downfield to give him the yardage they needed. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted, but I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their history. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. Hey, let's go. 39. On first down, Ryan going for the deep ball. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Again from the 20 after the incompletion. Here's second and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down here at the 28. Eight yards on the run there, and that leaves him with third and just a couple. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters enormous spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. It'll be a pickup of four, good enough to earn them yet another first down. But give the defensive guys a little bit of credit. They didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play, did they? No, the, the drag. And he can't escape the pressure. Ryan goes down. Sack now up. On second down, here's Ryan. Looking downfield for Jones. And this is caught right along the sideline. What a job of keeping the toes inbounds there. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. 20, 20. Right. Right. Hey, hey, oh. Right half, right half. Get out of that. They'll throw on first down with Ryan. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. I know there'll be a little bit of criticism there because they went right back to the air after the huge pickup and end up getting sacked. That's often a play that you make. You feel like you've got momentum on your side. Unfortunately, the O-line failed to hold up to try to keep that momentum going. And Jones has it over the middle. And he'll get it down on the play to the 37. The offense on third down tonight, they've been okay. Two for three thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. From the gun, it's Ryan. He finds Coleman. And they'll get this one down to about the 20-yard line. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. And passing yardage-wise, now up over 350 in this game. Pretty nice performance. Definitely that, which usually means you're putting a lot of pressure on guys trying to cover. If you're a defensive back and they put over 350 yards on you, you've had a long day. The key to everything, if you're doing it without throwing interceptions or turning the ball over. After the incompletion, here's second and 10 from the 20. To throw again. Ryan, Sanu with a grab over the middle. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. On third down, Ryan. And that one's going to be over everybody in the back of the end zone. It's incomplete. There's definitely contact there, but it's the fourth quarter of a kind of tight game, and sometimes the officials just say, let them play. Kind of like your mom used to, you and your brothers, just take the broom to you and send you out to the backyard and tell you to settle <laughs> yourselves. I like that, yeah. There was contact. I don't know, like you said, enough to warrant the flag. It was close, though. 
They'll try and throw for it with Ryan. It's caught. Jones. And he will be brought down at about the six-yard line. Some collective exhales over there on the sideline. A big pickup through the air on fourth down to bring up first and goal. And he slings one that's incomplete. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. And especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, is yeah, it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And, and that is caught. Touchdown, Falcons. In for the score. And the Falcons have broken our tie. Bryant tacks on the extra point, and they will take a seven-point lead. Now here's Bryant to kick it away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got it. Accelerating and off he goes. Touchdown, Jaguars. Austin Safarian Jenkins, 75 yards. And the Jaguars are within an extra point of tying this one up. Don't forget the extra point. It's up and good. And we are tied here in the fourth quarter. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. That's fielded in the end zone. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. Now he'll be wrapped up around the waist and pushed down. Marcel Darius coming up the middle. Gets him there for a loss of about nine. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. Now Ryan. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Tie game, fourth quarter, and they're going for this thing on fourth down. The Falcons will go for it. It's Ryan. And he'll wind up losing five yards or so on the return, but no matter, they've got the football back. So how about that for a momentum switch? We're in the fourth quarter, and it's a tie game. You've got to take care of the football here. Now their opportunity to take the lead right out the window, and everything is flipped in the other direction. The pitch to Fournette, and this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. They'll run it again with Fournette. 
Been a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. And he gets them a little over half of what they needed. Now they're looking at a third and five. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville at a first down. Time for a break. We'll come back and see how it all shakes out after this. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they've got it in the red zone now, down at about the 19. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Lucy, Lucy. Hey, 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 hey. To throw his borders. And the hit turned it loose. It's incomplete. I guess you can't be afraid to take those chances late in the game. He tried to fit that one in there. Nice job, though, defensively. Well, to your point, it was a nice job of knocking the ball away. But you're also right. You can't be afraid to take those chances. That means your guys going downfield to catch the ball, they've got to elevate their game and come down with these in order to keep your offense moving. On third down, Fournette. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line have to kick this field goal, don't you? No question about it. Look at the clock. Look at the situation. Kick the field goal. Doug Marone has made the call. His guys are going for it. Bortles going to go on fourth down. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he'll have the first down, getting this one to the 14-yard line. And the drive stays in motion with a nice eight-yard pickup on fourth. Let's go, let's go. Three, two. They'll toss it to Fournette. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Now, what's the thinking here? Because a touchdown would be nice, but you've ensured yourself a chance at three in the lead, so how worried are you about the six? You're not very worried about if you're confident in your kicker. And if you got a kicker who can put it through the post, you feel really good about trying to bleed that clock down. In an ideal scenario, your kicker puts it through the post as the clock hits zeros. And the Falcons going to use another timeout as he'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the game. The Jaguars on third down. Not quite 50%. Four for nine. This will be third and six. Back to throw. Bortles. He may try and run for this. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As the clock will stop with 35 seconds left to go. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. This to take the lead here in the final minute. All right, so time to reset here. It's a huge kick there. Gives them the lead, but they've got to be careful that their celebrations aren't a little too premature. You're exactly right about that because there still is time for the other guys to run a few plays and get into field goal position. So this defense is going to need to come up with one final stop if they're going to get out of here with a victory. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And here now come the Falcons. They only need a field goal. Obviously, the clock a huge factor. They'll be watching that. What do they need to do here, Charles? Your sequence of plays has to get you out of bounds. Completions, get out of bounds, gain some yardage. Then when the clock hits seven seconds or left, now you've got a decision. Are you in field goal range, or is it Hail Mary time? Because from seven seconds down, you don't want to take a shot that you're going to have another play. We'll see how they handle it. The first play of the drive there is incomplete. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. And that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Hey, let's go. 
They'll look to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. That one goes for 24 yards. And he did exactly what they needed him to do, Charles. Got out of bounds. They have no timeouts. And they knew that before the play even began. Still executed it. How many times have we seen it happen where you know it, yet a guy's still looking for a timeout or trying to stay in bounds? He got it done. Back to throw. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. Jalen Ramsey right there in coverage to knock it away. He has had a great game defensively. He's been east-west, north-south, everywhere. Yeah, and I love how you described that because to be a great defender, you have to be able to move up and back, sideline to sideline, and he's been fantastic. Reminds me of a young Charles Davis when he was playing mad. Absolutely. Oh, wow, I thought you were going on the field, but okay, I see you. He's back to throw. The right side. It's a gain of five, and they're going to have a third down. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. to throw that's caught it's Coleman and he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30 that one goes for 13 yards and it moves the sticks well how about keeping your head about you in this situation no more timeouts finds a way to get out of bounds now they can breathe a little bit as they contemplate what to do on the next down So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming. And a timeout comes in. The whistles blow with three seconds remaining. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And did he just clock that? Looked like he tried to stop the clock, but the clock wasn't even moving. So the field goal unit is on the field, as this is a big spot right here. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. kicks of the night is forthcoming and now we'll get a timeout here they're able to stop it with one second to go in this game so here we go maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming with one second to go this to send us to overtime is no good and that is how this game comes to a close
I roll up and I'm smelling like a smell right now. I do this for my rounds. Oh, yeah. Show you no love, baby. Yeah, I'm a I am a boss in the cut, made it. Bubbles and bubbles and bubbles. These models are next French exhibition. It's popping out to the franchise. I skip her, I give her the.